This is going to be your guide to the Animal Crossing New Horizons version 2.0 update. If you enjoy the video or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like and share it with all your friends. Now let's get into these tips and tricks where the first thing I have to say is if you don't have an insane amount of Nook Miles, don't buy everything like I did. The most important thing is the be a chef, but if you want to have fun, the pro camera app is super fun. Then we got some more custom designs and the pro decorating license. And a lot of it depends on how you play the game because there's some really cool new islands out there, but Captain's boat trips are going to cost 1,000 Nook miles each and you only get to do one a day. But if you time skip, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with time skipping, you are going to be burning through those Nook Miles really quickly, and also goes into a lot of how we're going to be exploring this new update, so that is something to keep in mind. But the big thing about this update is the storage shed, and that costs 6,000 Nook Miles each. And this is also kind of going into the next thing. You need to plan ahead. There is a lot of new stuff to do each and every day right now. So even if you don't time skip for personal reasons or something, these are still things you need to keep in mind because if you miss a day of advancement, it's going to feel really bad because there's a lot of stuff you have to do inside of a day now. So buying the storage shed means it's going to be shipped to your mail. So if you want to be having these around your island, you need to buy them first and then you wait the day or you time skip, then they will be available. Also, same thing goes for the personal portable ATM. Now, something you want to do quickly is talk to Tom Nook and get your storage maxed out on your house. Now, you need to have your house fully upgraded and paid off, but most people have that because the game has been out for like a year and a half or something, and people are pretty hardcore when it comes to Animal Crossing. So, you go about my home, you go to increase storage, it's going to be 500,000 bells for the first upgrade, 700,000, 900,000, then 1.2 million bells to get your storage maxed out for your house. And like all the other upgrades to your house, it's going to take a day to complete so once again you get that rolling you get a storage shed in your mailbox and then we also need to go and visit Harv's Island now if you've never been to Harv's Island you're not going to see the DLC Island until the second day because you need to be introduced to Harv and his island after that you'll get a message from him in the mail and then you visit the island and this area will be opened up and it's his co-op now when you visit this island you need to bring a hundred thousand bells at least you should because it's going to save you some time and then you talk to the gyroids and for a 100,000 bell donation you can permanently set up these villagers to then distribute their goods. Now much like everything else in this game, once you pay the 100,000 bells for a character's plot you need to wait a day but then they are here permanently which means you don't have to wait for the day they randomly show up on your island so that's going to save you a lot of time and you want to do leaf first because farming is now in the game so if you want the produce he sells the seeds but there's a problem only two are available at a time so if you need to get all of the new items it's going to take multiple days but it also takes multiple days to set up the co-op so that's how you do it you set them up first and then you bring a hundred thousand bells and then you talk to the gyroid and then you get something set up and then you're good to go now it does get interesting because I, I kind of like lost track of what I was doing. I never went to Harv's Island first, and then I showed up on the second day for the co-op, and then by the third day, so the second day if you already have Harv unlocked, there's an ATM that appears. Now, I wasn't keeping super track of it, but I don't think it was here on the first day of the co-op, but it should appear by the second day of the co-op. Just bring like 100,000 bells the first time, get leaf, and then you're going to be good to go. After that, you can just withdraw bells as you need, and yeah, then you just kind of build it up, time skip, or wait a day, or do whatever you please, and then... Just kind of keep slowly building this out and eventually everyone will be here. Now, when you're a day in and you have your first storage shed, I recommend putting it by Captain's Dock. That way you can dump off everything from your dailies and then go to his island because you only get it once per day. So I find it to be a nice quality of life and it saves a lot of time. So I have my rock garden set up, you know, go and hit my rocks, do a couple of things I need to do for the day. So we go and grab all that, we pass by the museum. I also have like a nice little archaeology area so we can go dig up our fossils. If it's in the fall, I can also grab mushrooms, maybe there's also a balloon floating by, and then life is just super easy when I head over here. Boom, there's the storage shed. If you don't know what the storage shed does, it interfaces with the storage in your home, so you can just put away everything, and then you have a clear inventory for when you go to the island. That way you can bring back as many things as possible without having to stop by your house first, which can get a little annoying. 
So that's just a little bit of advice that I found to be super nice. Also, if you have a broken gyroid in your inventory, you want to place it, you want to water it, and it's going to take a day to kind of grow back to full, and then that's when you get one of the random gyroids. You'll know it's been successfully watered when you see a puff of smoke emerging from where you buried it, and that's just kind of like a nice little thing of wrapping up all of your dailies and then making sure everything is kind of in order as you go and adventure through. So now we can go and talk to Captain. Um, take, costs like a thousand Nook Miles to do the trip, and if you mash B, you'll cancel the uh, singing, and then you just go straight to the island. Now, the new Mystery Islands are a completely different thing, and we're still waiting on the full information for that, so I recommend hitting the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, that way you can find out anything that's going on. Also, depending on when you're watching this, I might already have the island guide up. I'm really just waiting for the data mine, and then we can see everything that's going on in every island, that way you know what to take advantage of. So maybe check out my Animal Crossing New Horizons playlist, and then you can just kind of get the most out of the new update. But generally, there's going to be a theme to the island, so this is a fall-themed island, even though currently my Nintendo Switch is set for, like, April or something, because I was, like, testing out a few things. So if we go to System, we go to Date and Time, oh, we go to Date and Time, we can see that says 4-4. So we're April 4th, 2022, and then we get a fall island, so this is actually going to be really nice for, like, getting time-exclusive things if you don't time skip, or also just, like, not having to move your clock around too much if you just want to get some items. So, yo... Picking up mushrooms, we can get pine cones. We can also find themed recipes. So generally, like if this is gonna be a fall themed island, I'm gonna expect a fall themed recipe. And it's just like any other mystery island. So you're gonna have spawns, you're gonna have rock. If it's a meteor shower island, the time will be forced into nighttime, even if you're playing during the day. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And also means the rocks will have star fragments in them. So try to get a perfect rock um, mining setup going for it. And now that we picked up the message in the bottle, let's go and see the recipe that we received from it. And boom, pond bonsai tree. So we get some cool stuff, and then, yeah, it's like a standard mystery island. You can farm it, you can get fish, and it's going to be seasonal. So anything that's out of season, you might want to consider picking up. And there's also going to be a digging spot on every island. Instead of a fossil, this is how you get the gyroids. So again, it's a lot of like one a day stuff. You go to one island a day, you find your gyroid fragment, you go back home, you bury it somewhere, you water it. The next day, you go and pick it up, and then that's when you kind of complete all the dailies that you have hanging from the previous day, like Tom Nook upgrading your house, or all the things that are going on on Harv's Island, or just grabbing your storage shed, or the um, ATM that you're looking for. And the last tips are going to be around cooking and farming. So to unlock more recipes, there's a lot of different things that can go on. But the first thing you want to do is head on over to Nook's Cranny, where, boom, right here, basic cooking recipes will be available. So this will give you 10 recipes, and that will get you started on your cooking journey. Also, you might have noticed that the recipe card has a different icon on it. So if you see a whisk, that means you have a recipe for cooking. So you want to kind of, like, find those. Now, to get more recipes, you have to go to Cap'n's Islands, and sometimes the island will be produce-themed. So there's going to be, like, a lot of pumpkins there or potatoes, and the recipe will have a whisk on it, and it will be something for a new cooking recipe. So it's kind of like this interesting thing to where you don't have to visit his islands to get all the produce because of leaf, but by going there every day, you can stumble into a... It's, like, more uncommon than rare, so it's not, like, super rare. You can find these kind of regularly and then if they have produce on them that's going to be a good way of getting the recipes now at this time it isn't currently known like the best way of getting all the recipes or how to get every single one but it is a guaranteed way of finding cooking recipes so as more information becomes available more methods and whatnot i will be releasing guide videos on that but it's a good tip to kind of keep your eye out for what's going on and just kind of what you're doing as you're unlocking produce so the way that produce works is just like pumpkins, and pumpkins have been, like, turned into a cooking ingredient. So if you plant it, it's just going to grow naturally over a couple days where you can have, like, one pumpkin or one potato grow. But if you water it every day, you're going to have a greater yield when everything is fully grown. So you can have, like, up to three pumpkins or three potatoes, and then you can get more sugar cane that way. And you don't have to replant it, you just take your pieces and then wait for them to grow back over the course of a couple days. Now, to start cooking, you're going to need a kitchen, but when you unlock the ability to cook, you will get a recipe for a stonework kitchen. So, it's not really crazy to make, but you ne will need one. Also, there's multiple ways of getting kitchens. Like, I just knocked down a balloon while in between takes for this video, and it gave me a compact kitchen. So yeah, I got a compact kitchen, and it works because you can just use the kitchen to cook whatever, and then 
you have all the recipes and then you make the ingredients and cool stuff like that. So you need to find sugarcane, wheat, there's carrots, there's potatoes, there's pumpkins, tomatoes. And another really cool thing about the update is that you can actually put away recipes into storage. So that might be one of the biggest things for many people. The only other thing I have to say is that some recipes are just going to be kind of acquired through inspiration. So like sometimes when you're just playing the game, you're like, hey, this gives me an idea for a recipe. That can happen while you're just kind of out and about doing things that will unlock the recipe. So if you catch a sea bass, then you get a recipe to cook fish or cook the sea bass, which means that like sea bass aren't just trash fish anymore. They're actually used for cooking, which is pretty cool. So yeah, those are some of the tips and tricks I have with the new Animal Crossing update to get you started off on the right foot. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.